Once upon a time, there was an area in the Atlantic Ocean that had lots of water in it, and then one day Mike Chapman appeared and poof, the Sea of Thieves was born. How do I know it's located here? Because this map shows its real world location. Is it actually real though? Probably. I mean, it's entirely possible with the scope of the planet's surface that it, it doesn't exist. The Sea of Thieves is surrounded by this thick fog known as the Shroud. Nobody knows what it is or how it got here, but it can really give your ship and your mortality a good butt slap if you don't know the route through. But do you know who does know the route through? The Pirate Lord. Sure, he looks like the poster child for an energy drink commercial right now, but he was once a salty sea dog like the rest of us, known as Ramsey. Himself and a bunch of other pirates got word of a fantastical land full of plunder and made their way here. Long before us pirates came here, there was an indigenous tribe of humans known as the Ancients. They went to all sorts of black magic, necromancy, and getting drunk with crabs, and they're probably responsible for all the curses and the shroud itself. But nobody really knows. <laughs> Get out of here, Mike. <laughs> so Ramsey and a bunch of other crews came to these lands to plunder. Among them were Grey Marrow, Briggsy, and the crew of the Morning Star. Except they weren't dead or walking around like loot pinata skeletons. And a mysterious fella known as the Captain. The Captain had a crew member by the name of Flameheart. It's not known whether Flameheart mutinied the Captain's ship or whether he just threw a temper tantrum and got his own vessel. But the vessel Flameheart eventually sailed was the Burning Blade. Flame Flameheart's story is shrouded in mystery, but somewhere along the line, fortifications began to be built where tribute was laid for Mr. Flameheart, either by skeletons or what were formerly people loyal to his cause. Anyway, it's all really confusing and being all held in Mr. Chapman's super secret box of secrets, along with the lies like the shredded goat. Ramsey, aka the Pirate Lord, decided he didn't like the way all these lunatics were running the place, so he hatched a plan to lock all of the cursed treasure in the lands into silly little chests, where he only had the key to open them. The Pirate Lord essentially wanted to turn the Sea of Thieves into a pirate theme park. One of his crew members, Rathbone, thought he was a silly twit and threw a hissy fit, and teamed up with Stitcher Jim and some other silly waffles to steal the keys and form the Goldwater Alliance. Then Rathbone, the silly monkey, got himself cursed by the treasure and ended up sitting on his throne, got all emo and turned into the Gold Hoarder, and now gets spanked by open crews on a daily basis. Meanwhile, the Pirate Lord found a subspecies of human called Called the Merfolk, and they didn't like him very much. But then he found out one of them got kidnapped by a bunch of double gunning tryhards. So he saved them, and now the Merfolk repay this deed by taking us back to our ship if we fall overboard. Or not. The stupid f. Flameheart got his buttocks in a pinch grip about this and was like, Hey, no! I don't like this. And pursued the Pirate Lord's ship, the Magpie's Wing, and sunk him on this spit of land. Probably because of all the f reefs. Then something happened that we don't know. Flameheart did have a dead, and did have a dead in a box. And his dead did not actually have a dead, because his body did dead, but his soul did not dead. And then Pendragon did have him not to be dead. And then all this crap happened, you stupid plank, Pendragon. Epic Tash. Then the Pirate Lord also did have a dead, but only his body did have a dead. But how? Ow. We don't know. Shh. He became Mr. Lime Fanta, then had an everlasting piss up in a tavern named from his post fail ship, called the Athena's Fortune, named after his wife. Probably because his wife at this point was a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hate me. Meanwhile, Flameheart's adopted son, who is nameless as far as we know, probably because he had a really stupid name like Boris or Toby, learned of his dad's death and decided he wanted to be just like him. I want to be just like my daddy. And came to the Sea of Thieves, found a mystical chest, got chased, sank in the shroud, found a strange island, grabbed a riddle from a skeleton's hands, got lost in some caves, drank some voodoo heebie-jeebie juice from a carved out water source using an old chalice, and the silly spanner turned himself into a skeleton. And then he found this strange guy called the Captain. Remember him? The Captain was all like, Yo, you smell like your daddy. I like you. Get in the van. Oh yeah. And then the ferryman happened. Uh, nobody knows why, but... <clears throat> About five or ten years passed, and then this sorry-faced sap called Wanda finds a cannon and other debris on the ocean floor. Turns out this wreckage was from the Burning Blade. This silly bint tried to make cursed cannibals using the iron from the cannons. It worked! But then she got all manager's haircut, and then her flesh fell off, and she became a skeleton lord known as the Warsmith. With her newfound manager's haircut, she summoned skeletal vessels to take all of the outposts in the Sea of Thieves, in the name of Flameheart. That's Flameheart Senior 
Gear, the badass Flameheart, not the silly chalice sniffing tryhard tied up in the captain's van. There were no puppies, Flameheart Jr. There were no puppies. <laughs> The warsmith failed, and we all thought that she had done her dead, but she had not. She came back as the masked stranger. Meanwhile, Mr. Jim forged an alliance with Captain Morrow and her crew to discover the devil's roar. It worked, but they sank, and then they were stranded, so Captain Morrow thought it would be great to build an outpost on a sodding volcano. Then Stitcher Jim had a look inside a mysterious box, and lost his mind, and was no longer best buddies with the gold hoarder, and instead lined his bedroom with flameheart posters. He was found on an island by the masked stranger, and he fell in love with her. The masked stranger and Stitcher Jim manipulated the bilge rats to do their dirty deeds for them. They got us sorry saps to bring them reaper's chests, gold, and made us do some interior decorating on a fort. And finally got us to pull Mr. Pendragon's soul from a painting and tricked him into releasing the soul of Flameheart. You are a dick, Pendragon. Epic Tash. Oh, and then she built this place where you can buy some silly pajamas and then sail around running away from everyone because you're a silly wussy goody two shoes. So Reaper's Hideout was built, the world rejoiced a true PvP faction. <laughs> But suddenly, the Mass Stranger was nowhere to be seen, instead replaced by this dude. Turns out, the Mass Stranger spent all of her pocket money building the Reaper's Outpost, with the promise of being Flameheart's lapdog. But he said, No, I lied. And the Mass Stranger got really grumpy and yeeted it out of there, and went in search of a new senpai. <laughs> Meanwhile, Flameheart became a head in the sky and shouted at everyone, and made it really easy to get rank 5 Reaper. Remember the PvP faction? <laughs> So Flameheart went about his merry business, summoning ghost ships, summoning Ashen Lords, and generally making the horizon light up like a sky piñata. But during all of this, some other guy started to get a bit squiffy. This dude, Mr. Duke, the only bilge rat representative at Outposts. We loved him. Everyone loved him. Apart from this woman. She hated him. And basically kicked him out for being a lovable drunk. So Duke went on a vacation with Umbra, and got really bored because he wasn't getting laid, and decided to go off on his own adventure. He started finding really weird runes around the world. With skeletal writing on them. Turns out whoever was making these runes was in search of the Silver Blade, Flameheart Junior's flagship. Unfortunately, this led him to the lair of the Siren Queen and wait, 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 what's that? What's that? What's that noise? Jack Sparrow enters the Sea of Thieves with Squid Face in tow. Jack Sparrow stole something from Davy Jones, and he wants it back. Turns out the talisman lets you travel between worlds. So Davy Jones sunk him, thinking he'd get back what was rightfully his. But no, new world, new rules, Mr. Davy Jones. You f***ing idiot. Jack Sparrow didn't die. Instead, he went to the Sea of the Damned and took his talisman with him. Turns out he's been locked away in the ferry for quite a while, and we went and saved him. Then we broke the bloody ship. We broke the bloody ship. Then Squidface turned up and Jack Sparrow fell off the ship with the talisman, so that didn't last very long. Yikes. Okay, I'll fast forward a bit because these tall tales are pretty cool, but lack any real progression within the main story apart from a few. Whoa, 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 whoa. stop, 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 stop. Right here. Looky, looky. We found the Silver Blade 2. It's an elevator. Kraken head. Turns out the Sea Queen has the ability to lock pirates away in mermaid statues and cooks them into ocean crawlers. And that explains statues. I don't understand why gems come out of them and not humans, but it's all right, that's fine. Also, this was the fate of Duke. However, Davy Jones had now formed an alliance with the Masked Stranger and the Gold Hoarder, who for some reason came back even though we killed him and sold his skull. I still don't understand. It's just weird. And the mysterious entity only known as the Captain. He cursed Flamar Jr. Davy Jones offered Duke an alliance called the Dark Brethren, and in return, he would save him. Duke agreed, because together they looked like a really badass rock band. Together, they tried to tear down the walls of the living and the sea of the damned, but then Davy Jones turned into a big cloud, got a bit sad, and then Jack Sparrow, Pendragon, the crew of the Morning Star, and Rose and Jim saved the day. And they all went for a party on the Black Pearl, and Rose and Jim went with him. Meanwhile, what was left of the Dark Brethren escaped into a portal and cried a lot. However, all was not unicorn rainbow farts, because other people had been watching, namely the big bobblehead in the sky. With new all-you-can-eat access to the Sea of the Damned, using this new easy portal hop method, Flameheart and his son, I mean, sorry, the Servant of Flame, ventured forth to recruit new allies, namely the Spanish ghost dudes. And then using his weird powers, he brought forth a bunch of forts that were taught cannon ballistics from the Stormtrooper Academy. Hey. Remember that Sea Queen? Turns out she loved one of the ancient humans, so she used some voodoo magic to turn him into a Murpho. It worked, but then, you know, curse, death, screaming, they turn into sirens. It was really sad. 
Meanwhile, some islands got farted on, turns out the Serpent of Flame and his Reapers had dropped dark relics, and talismans around the islands to cover them in a shroud and merge the two worlds together. Wait, do these look familiar? Yes, they were placed by the Servant of Flame, and Duke was the one who sniffed them out. Oh, also, it was revealed the Servant of Flame is in fact Flame Art's son. I told you. So that's why these rune tablets were writing about the Silver Blade. And now it all makes sense. Sort of. Flameheart and his son could have sped up the process if they found the Veil of the Ancients, which happened to be stuck up the Megalodon's butt, but they failed, because Merrick crashed the ship into a rock, and then Pendragon put a big rubber glove on and rooted out that Veil mask. Mm. And the legend of the Veil began. We found the Veil Stones, we saved the day, the Pirate Lord stole it, you asshole! But Golden Sand still had a fart, so we all battled it out to decide who would win, the Reapers or Merrick. Turns out the community chose Merrick's side, I mean, you know, no one's perfect, I guess. Oh, and DeMarco died. 200 retweets, we need 200 retweets right now, make that my Instagram play hot and that's why you retweet me so I say grandma when you do that as well, that's something you can do. Oh, look, a note. But who killed him? Nobody knows. No, really, nobody. They're not going to tell us for at least four years, by my prediction. It's getting a getting a little bit tiring now. But hey, word search! So remember that woman that every single person in the community blamed for DeMarco's death? This woman? No, probably not, because 90% of the community had no clue who she was. Well, anyway, she actually did kill Merrick. Well done, hashtag save Golden Sands. And now, the Dark Brethren have returned. Along with the not so mass stranger and Juki Boy who have kidnapped him and holding him hostage in the Sea of the Damned. Because he knows something. Something very, very, very important. And it's probably how to fix it, Reg.